We're going to hear from the Everly Brothers, and then we'll join John Dedekas, who talks with Don and Phil Everly, and then with a young lady touring with them. Her name is Julie Felix. Now, when did you come in contact with Felice and uh, Boudlow uh, Bryant? In 57, uh, Boudlow had written Bye Bye Love, and, and uh, when we signed with Cadence Records at that time, um, they, Boudlow brought the song in, and uh, we did it. How, are you still working with them at all? Or? Oh, we're still uh, very close friends with them, and uh, we still work with them. We just did a Boudlow Bryant song on the, the album that's coming out, our most recent recorded album. Uh, the release is, I don't know, soon, not too long. We got a new album called Pass the Chicken and Listen. We have a Boodle O'Brien song on called Rocky Top. You may know the song. Pass the Chicken and Listen. Pass the Chicken and Listen, Southern. <laughs> How has the business changed over the years? I think, Phil, in an interview, you said that the DJ used to be a baron in the industry and now no longer is. They used to call them record barons and the um, local record barons, you know. It's before the, um, just about the time bandstands started to become a real power. Just before that, they used to have each town had a local record baron. I think it, with the top 40 format, things like that have changed uh, the uh, the amount of, of music you listen. I myself would like to see the day when uh, you had what, you could, what I call, and has been called, the industry personality jocks. I think it's better, more fun, and you get uh, more interesting, interesting radio. Take a message to Mary, but don't tell her where I am. Take a message to Mary, but don't say I'm in a jam. You can tell her I had to see the world, or tell her that my ship set sail. You can say she better not wait for me, but don't tell her I'm in jail. Oh, don't tell her I'm in jail. Take a message to Mary, but don't tell her what I've done. Please don't mention the stagecoach and the shot from a careless gun. You can tell her I had to change my plans and cancel out the wedding day. But please don't mention my lonely cell where I'm gonna find a way. message to Mary, but don't tell her all you know. My heart's aching for Mary, Lord knows I miss her so. Just tell her I went to Timbuktu, tell her I'm searching for gold. You can say she'd better find someone new to cherish and to hold. When Devoted to You came out in Bird Dog, my sister was about, I think, 16, and when she heard it on the radio, she really dug it, you know, and then a little later on, she found out it was the Everly Brothers. She always thought it were f they were female vocalists. D is that a natural reaction? Did you find that happening when you first made it big? No. Is my, is my sister weird? <laughs> I don't know what your sister's like. But uh, not really too often that happened because uh, from my very first hit, they would announce, here's the Everly Brothers singing Bye Bye Love. So I don't know how the confusion would come about. Occasionally there was confusion with, uh, once in a while we'd get uh, associated with the Everly Brothers. Remember Bob and Ray from the big band era and you'd arrive at a hotel and they'd say, hey, you look much younger, things like that. When did you change from a more guitar-oriented thing to adding the big beat and more electricity? When did that happen, Don? Well, we've uh, always kept the pretty basic, the, basically the same sound. 
we used uh, not so much as well as in the late 50s it wasn't uh, really technically a lot of the, you know available a lot of the things that you use in the studio now you're dealing with 16 track as opposed to two you know from the 50s to the 70s there's a long span and there's a great amount of uh, more, more technique in recording has gone down, I think, than, than in the music, except for what the Beatles have contributed. Why do you never really try to get a message across in your songs? They're basically, you know, the, uh, the love well, type thing. I think that's thing. basically the message is, is what everybody is doing. It's just a matter of, of doing something people try to, can re relate to in some personal sense instead of some uh, a broad sense. I myself believe music reflects the time and it doesn't dictate them and therefore what you should do is something that reflects what you're feeling or trying to feel or want people to feel. My real theory about message music is that you have to be very, very careful because you're using a, a medium that originally was designed as, as something pleasant to uh, lay an opinion on somebody. Now if a politician's talking, you, you know he's a politician talking, but if you get a politician singing, you've got a problem because you're going to listen a little longer. What do you plan to do in the future now? You've, you've been in the business for, what, 17 years or so? Uh, 15 years recording, uh, since 57 recording. And, uh, um, you know, if, if you count all that uh, other work that we did, you know, on radio, but uh, I don't know if you count that, you know. And it's over, way over 25 years, you know. Just continue to continue. There's, yep. no, there's no real reason to stop making music in your life, I don't think. I can't think of any good reason to. Music at uh, 33 is not, I'm not going to sit down and faint in any, in any corner. What do you attribute to your longevity, the fact that you've been around and been successful for this long, Don? Well, I think we just look at it as an occupation. Having grown up in it gives you a little bit different look, a viewpoint, you know. Uh, we always wanted to make it big, but we always knew we were going to be in it. You know, because we'd, we'd earned our livelihood for so very long doing uh, what we do. That just gives you a certain amount of, uh, you know, uh, peace of mind. Now that you know your trade pretty well, you know. Do you back that up, Phil? Yes, I think that's a uh, fairly well put. The uh, it's just to, to it's an assumptive uh, attitude to think that you should have to do something else. It's not. This is basically all there should be, you know, and really in in a person's life is things that they like. Do you think you had? A normal relationship with other people or do you think that show business has uh, changed your outlook or changed we've had a, I think we've had a normal relationship with show business people uh, you know people aren't people are people no matter what they do you know but if you were an electrician you'd have a normal relationship with electricians but you might not be associating so much with plumbers uh, because it's a general interest in things and it's nothing unique it's just that that's the way it's the way the whole thing is I think that uh, my life's been uh, fairly normal. I feel fairly stable. I don't feel you know, insane or you know, too much. And, you know. Well, uh, you tend to uh, uh, talk to people that talk, talk about the same things you talk about. And when you're in music or in show business, you know, uh, you tend to uh, be in that circle, I guess, or in that group of people. I have a lot of people that aren't in show business. But uh, most of the people are pretty well aware of what pop music would be all about or us, you know be sort of hard to communicate you know. how do you two get along as, as brothers you've been together for so long and it seems that the the tendency in, in groups that perform together is that one would break off and become a solo act why didn't that happen with the Everly Brothers well so far we've been able to make more money together <laughs> so uh, you know uh, well the Everly Brothers I think will be around for another 10 years you know and we can do whatever we want solo wise you know so it really doesn't have any uh, bearing on it. Everly Brothers is sort of like a third identity. You've got myself, and then you've got Phil, and then you got the Everly Brothers. You know, because we're completely different. I mean, when we're, doing, when we're being the Everly Brothers, is when we're just being a person in a room. Phil? So? That's a, uh, basically it. You know, the, you get on about it like any, other, any two people do that are doing something, you know. And what the real value of, uh, of it is the fact that you have their physical... Uh, vocal physical uh, alikenesses that create a, help you to create a sound because your voice textures and things like that uh, uh, anybody that has a brother knows you everybody people are just different but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that because you're brothers you have to uh, be you know unhappy about it in fact if anything it should make life easier I took my little Jenny to a party last night 
10 o'clock and he been in a heck of a fight But some of it by Jenny, she went out like a light Your name is Julie Felix? That's right. Okay, where are you from? I was born in California. And what are you doing in Frankfurt, West Germany? Well, I've lived...